The Saab 29 Tunan was a true pioneer. It was the first Western European fighter to be produced with a swept wing after the Second World War, the first Swedish aircraft specifically designed to use jet propulsion, and the first Swedish jet aircraft that saw combat. Today, we're investigating the Saab 29, the Flying Barrel. The Saab 29 Tunan was one of the best first-generation jet fighters and it was definitely the cutest one. Even though the Swedish bird did not reach the glory of the MiG-15, F-84 Thunderjet or F-86 Sabre in combat or in the market, many military aviation experts consider it as the best jet fighter of the early 1950s. The name Tunan comes from the aircraft's appearance. The Saab 29 was initially nicknamed as Fligande Tunan, meaning flying barrel, then just Tunan, meaning barrel, was used. After the Second World War, Sweden became one of the pioneers of the jet era. In 1947, the first Swedish jet fighter, Saab 21R, made its maiden flight. However, it was a jet converted from the piston engine J-21. On the other hand, the Swedish Air Force had already initiated the JXR project in the late 1945 to develop a pure-blood jet fighter. Sweden considered several different proposals presented by the Saab design team. The RX-1 was an aircraft similar to the British Vampire. The R-101 had a similar appearance with the US P-80 shooting star. The R-101, which would win the contest and become the Saab 29, initially had a straight-wing design. Meanwhile, a Messerschmitt employee who was carrying secret SS documents was arrested while illegally crossing the German-Swiss border. So, the Swedish engineers could obtain many papers of Messerschmitt's several projects. Particularly, the company's P-1101 served as the basis for the new aircraft's development. Its swept-wing design reduced the drag dramatically while approaching the sound barrier. Despite the similarities between the Saab 29 and P-1101, it would be wrong to think that Tunan was just a copy. The Swedish Royal University of Technology and the National Aeronautical Research Institute performed many wind tunnel tests, which also shaped the aircraft's aerodynamics. Besides, a Saab Safil was modified with a full-scale wing to verify the swept wing design further. After these works, the final design was shaped in January 1946. Sweden initially planned to equip the Saab 29 with the Goblin turbojet of the Havilland. However, the company had already developed the more powerful Ghost just before the end of 1945. So, Sweden chose the new engine and took its license production rights. Furthermore, Svenska Metallvelken manufactured an equivalent to the US 75S aluminum alloy for the aircraft. In the autumn of 1946, the Swedish Air Force formally ordered three prototypes. Some problems occurred during static tests of the full-scale mock-up, such as pressure cabin leaks and aileron behavior issues which caused a month's delay for the planned first flight. Thus, the Saab 29 met the sky for the first time on September 1, 1948. The aircraft was introduced to the Swedish Air Force Service under the name of J-29 in May 1951. Between 1950 and 1956, Saab produced 661 Tunans, making it the most produced combat jet by the company. The Saab 29 had a 25-degree swept wing. Even though the aluminum alloy developed by the Svenska Metallvelken was also used, the engineers preferred typical heavy aircraft construction materials in a large portion to meet conflicting requirements on space, strength, rigidity and accessibility. The rear landing gears retracted into the fuselage rather than the wings to make the wings as thin as possible. To reduce the weight, the turbojet's exhaust nozzle did not extend to the end of the fuselage but ended directly behind the engine. This design also made the aircraft's taking off and landing easier despite the short strut of the landing gear. The aircraft could be operated from rough airstrips. Automatically locking leading edge slots were interconnected with the flaps to make the low speed flight characteristics manageable and increase lateral stability during takeoff and landing. The cockpit was pressurized and the Saab 29 had an ejection seat developed by the company in 1943. 
The two-piece bubble canopy gave the pilot an excellent view. The engine was bolted to the fuselage at three points and a special trolley was used to remove the engine for maintenance. Except for the J29F, all Tunan variants had one 22kN Svenska Fjeld motor RM2 non-afterburning jet engine, the licensed production version of the De Havilland Ghost. The J29F was equipped with the more powerful RM2B with an afterburner. The 20mm Automod Canonel M47C was the licensed production variant of the Ispano Mark V autocannon. The Saab 29 carried 180 rounds per gun. After the two nuns retired, these cannons would be used to arm Panzer Bandwagen 302. The early fighter variants could carry up to 24 Bufosch made 75mm spring granite M55 air to air rockets against air targets. The J29F could also fire RB24 air to air missiles, the licensed production version of the US AIM 9 Sidewinder. However, due to limitations of the 1955 Austrian State Treaty, the Austrian jets were never armed with this missile. Austria acquired 30 J29Fs in two batches. The second batch of aircraft could carry a camera pod in the port side of the nose, which required the removal of two cannons. The first production variant of the aircraft was the J29A. Its later series had wing-mounted dive brakes moved to the fuselage ahead of the main landing gear doors. Saab produced 244 pieces of this fighter jet, yet the Swedish Air Force was unhappy about the short range of the J-29A with a 1,400-liter internal fuel capacity. So, the company developed the B variant. This fighter-bomber version could carry 2,100 liters of fuel internally. It could also be equipped with two 400 or 450-liter drop tanks under the wings. Besides, the maximum takeoff weight of the B variant increased to 8,170 kg from 7,530 kg. In 1954, a J-29B set the world speed record on a 500 km closed circuit at 977 km per hour. Its attack version was called A-29B. Saab produced 322 pieces of this version. The S-29C was the reconnaissance version. It had five cameras mounted in a modified nose, so no armament. All S-29Cs had the PQ-17 radar warning receivers, which made them the first Swedish combat aircraft with such a system. Saab produced 76 pieces of this version. The J-29D was a proposed fighter variant with an afterburner. A single aircraft was modified from a J-29B to test the 27.5 kN RM-2A afterburning turbojet. This jet was converted to the F version and then was lost in an accident in 1961. The J-29E had an improved wing design with a leading edge dog tooth. This change increased the wing area to 24.15 square meters from 24 square meters. Saab produced 29 pieces of this fighter version. The final version, the J-29F, had the same wings as the J-29E. It had the RM-2B afterburning turbojet. This engine change shortened the takeoff length, increased the rate of climb, and raised the top speed to 1,075 km per hour from 1,060 km per hour. The aircraft was converted from available stocks of B and E models. In 1963, all remaining 29 Fs were modified once more to carry a pair of RB-24 air-to-air -air missiles. Saab produced 308 pieces of this fighter version. Although Finland, Israel and Yugoslavia were interested in the Saab 29, Austria and Sweden remained the sole users of the Tunan. The J-29F version had a length of 10.23 meters, a wingspan of 11 meters and a height of 3.75 meters. Its wing area is 24.15 square meters. The aircraft's empty weight was 4,845 kilograms, while its maximum takeoff weight was 8,375 kilograms. One 27.58 kN Svinska Fligmotor RM2B afterburning turbojet provided a top speed of 1,075 km per hour. The J-29F's range was 1,100 km. The Tunan service ceiling was 15,500 meters, in other words, 50,900 feet. 
It had four 20mm Automat Cannon L M47 auto cannons. The J29F could carry the RB24 air-to-air -air missiles, bombs and rockets. The Saab 29 never saw action under the Swedish Air Force's command. On the other hand, the Swedish Tunans fought in Congo with the UN Roundel. Sweden initially sent five J29Bs to Congo and added four more J29Bs and two S29Cs to this force later for the Operation des Nations Unia Congo. The Tunans were the only combat aircraft operated on behalf of the UN. They generally performed ground attack missions with cannons and unguided rockets. No aircraft were lost in action despite heavy ground fire. Even though most sources claim only one J-29 was lost in Congo while taken off, Swedish sources mentioned two aircraft. When the UN mission ended in 1964, two J-29s and two S-29s returned to Sweden. Others were deliberately destroyed at their base as they were no longer needed in Sweden and their return cost was not economically feasible. The Swedish S-29Cs were used in spy flights over the territory of the USSR in the late 1950s. On October 20, 1964, two Austrian J-29Fs crossed Czechoslovakian airspace due to a navigational error caused by the bad weather and a radio beacon mix-up. Due to the vitiated air, the Czechoslovakian jets could not intercept them either, so they went deep into the interior of the country. After the pilots realized their fuel was running out, they landed in a field in the village of Oresh in Prague West District. Sweden retired the fighter versions of the Tunan from combat service in 1967. The J-35 Drakens and A-32 Lansens replaced them in the fighter and strike roles. Still, some aircraft were used as countermeasures trainers and target towing duties into the 1970s. The Swedish Saab 29s performed its last official military flight in 1976. The two nuns remained in the Austrian Air Force service until 1972. Even though it was considered as one of the best jet fighters of its time, the Saab 29 also had poor reputation due to its high accident rate. During the Swedish Air Force service, 245 two nuns were crashed, which cost the lives of 99 Swedish pilots. Likewise, the Austrian Air Force lost 10 J-29Fs and 6 pilots. Still, condemning the Tunan as an unreliable combat aircraft would be unfair. In the early 1950s, jet engine technologies and related aerodynamic knowledge were still immature, so the early jets were not as safe as the current ones. Even the later generation F-104 was nicknamed as Widowmaker due to its high accident rate. Even though Saab had offered a 2C training version of the Tunan, this variant was never realized due to a lack of demand. The Tunan was the first swept-wing jet of the Swedish and Austrian pilots. They were inexperienced in handling such an aircraft. The two-seat De Havilland Vampire T-55, which had a straight-wing design, was used to train them. This fact increased the accident rates, especially on first solo flights. Besides, the spirit of the time was different. Sweden was preparing for a total war of destruction. Like many counterparts of that time, the Swedish Air Force prioritized sharpening its pilot's skills rather than crew security regulations. The regular warlike exercises were intense and Swedish pilots had few restrictions on what they could do. Air combat was often practiced in large formations which made collisions inevitable. So, a high accident ratio was neither a surprise nor excessive regarding the conditions of that time. The unique barrel-like shape made the two nun cute. However, a fierce warrior was hidden under the sweet appearance. Since the Saab 21R was just a jet converted from a piston-engined aircraft, the Saab 29 symbolizes the actual beginning of Sweden's successful jet fighter development tradition, which makes the Tunan, the flying barrel, a true legend. Thanks for watching our video. And please don't forget to subscribe to our channel and give us a thumbs up if you liked our video. To be notified of our new videos, please click the bell button. Also, you can now click the join button to support our channel.